My guest tonight has way too many credits to list, but in short, he's been an executive producer for Top Chef, Queer Eye, Project Runway, and The Real Housewives franchise. He's also the host of Watch What Happens Live. Please welcome the king of reality television. He denies it, but I insist it's true. Andy Cohen. How are you, Andy? Conan. I wanted to ask you, first of all, uh, COVID, I know you had COVID. Right. Um, how are you feeling? Are, are you feeling okay now? I feel great. I mean, you know, my I always have a uh, little bit of an issue uh, finding names in my head. And I don't know if it's the COVID or the massive THC that's developed because of uh, the pandemic. Yeah. But, uh, but I otherwise feel great. Yeah, I can't come up with names now. I'm not sure who you are at this moment. I'm, I'm That's going, fine. I'm going in and out all the time, but I just attribute that to too much mileage, too many years, too many pop culture references, and uh, I can't come up with names now the way I used to. So, and I don't, and that is not COVID related. Well, the great thing about that is since everyone is communicating on zoom these days all you have to do is move your little mouse and then it'll say i'm like oh yeah that's conan o'brien like you, <laughs> our help? names are on the screen yeah. there it's been delightful talking to you andy cohen um i have to ask you this i know you have a son ben who is i think around two years old is that right correct well done um what's it like you're you're single you're in the dating world. What's it like dating when you have a two-year-old? I did not experience that. My dating uh, life, you know, ended, and then I had kids, and uh, so I never had to balance the two. Is it tricky? I actually have not dated in a very long time just because of the circumstances that we've been living in. But right. before, yes, it was very weird because people are like, oh, so you have a kid and then i'm like yeah and then i'm like look let's look at the nanny cam and then when they see the nanny cam it's like it's a little bit of a it's it's it makes it all very real to people right but know? i think that's in a way i'm gonna say this i think it's good because you find out you find out is this someone True. if the person is freaking out about that then you know right away you know yes. but if the person's like oh my god that's amazing you know that so it's good you're right have okay. you ever had an awkward thing where um, you know, you're talking to someone, you're interested, and then you realize that you've got child, you know, spit up all over your face, and you realize that you've completely compromised? No, I did. I was walking down the street with my son the other day, and it was like, I was taking him to this diner around the corner right. um, for an early dinner on a Sunday, and I didn't feel like bringing his diaper bag, and I just put a diaper and some wipes in my pocket. And this diaper was like, I didn't realize, but it was all coming out of my pocket on the street. And of course it's when I'm like checking out this super hot guy, as as you know, Conan, when you're like cruising a guy on the streets of New York City. You're, you're the telling me the there's city. a hot guy anywhere around. Beep, 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 beep. I can find him. I can find him. Legendary. That's Legendary. Legendarily. Well, yes. thank you. Thank you. Yes. Had Obviously, to, had to turn that's how you bit. met Jordan Schlansky, right? You, you <laughs> cruised him. That's right. That's my one of our uh, producers. You cruised so, him at the gym. We have an associate producer on the show, Jordan Schlansky. And there he is. And um, Jordan Schlansky is, uh, yes, that's how I met him. It right. turns out he's straight. And then I realized I'm straight. So it never developed into a relationship. Oh, that's too bad. But it will eventually, you know. Obviously. We... <laughs> I've always, you guys have been ripping on him for so long. I wonder what's holding him back from the full producer title? Uh, first of all, he does nothing. He okay, does absolutely right. nothing. And okay. you actually have to do something to become a full producer. He Got is it. lucky to be an associate producer. Right. Um, it's a total scam. And, uh, and, and that's why he is not progressing. And Got so, it. yeah. Okay. And I always wondered that. I yeah. was like, cause I think he's in his forties. He could be in his fifties or sixties. We don't know. Wow. He is not moving forward in life, but you know, uh, by he's the way. He's very well preserved. He's very well preserved though. I wanted to pitch you on an idea. I know that you are the king of reality television and you're a great Obviously. creator and producer of reality TV shows. What about a show with Jordan called Look at that up. up Shacking with up with the Schlanskys. Would that interest you at all? You know, 
I have to say, I find, you know, the the poster and the marketing is enough to get me in the tent, I have to say. Yeah. The it's... problem is he's a little bit of a flatliner on the air, so I don't know what you are going to have. It's perfect. The idea is that he doesn't even have a family. You just use digital imagery. So it's not like the Kardashians where there's actually different, distinct human being sisters. This is four Schlanskys that are digitally recreated and they all interact with each other. That's the next level of reality TV. You know what? I think you're right. Yeah. I think I want to buy that FTA or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know what those initials mean, but it's yours for $45 million and um, or $300. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> whatever you have on you. I just okay. want him gone. Yes. <laughs> Let me ask you something. I Yes. You have been extraordinarily successful. Um, yes, I'm going to move on and I'm going to do something for HBO Max. But I'm also thinking I need to broaden my horizons. Maybe I'd get into the world of reality television. I, I, I don't think it's too late. I think it's just beginning. And uh, one thing I'm curious about is what's your technique? If you had to boil it down, Andy, to what has been one of your techniques in reality TV that has paid off again and again and again, a little trick, a little something you do that really makes shows work, what would it be? Well, besides the casting, yep. because really it is about the casting, I think there's something that we call the Bravo wink when we edit the shows. And it's, you know, we if someone says, I'm crazy about fitness and all I do is, you know, work out, right. you know, the, the camera might pan off to the left and, you see an ashtray full of cigarettes yes, at the time. And got it. That's kind of the Bravo wink a little bit. I think I understand what you're talking about, Andy. Well, well, let me actually make this a little clearer because if I took you, for example, um, well, we, we brought a little piece of tape, a little uh, tape that might, might show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now let's take a look, let's see. On nights when our guest is here in person, it's got kind of a classy PBS look. A bad rap around California because. <laughs> I love you, Chuck. I feel like I'm jerking off a robot. <laughs> it all feels very educational and erudite. What do you think, Andy? That was fantastic. I, I. Hey, listen. Like, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What was happening in the clip of you wearing the mom jeans, putting your ass in that guy's face? That's from Comic Con. That's from Comic Con, and those weren't mom jeans. Uh, that was a superhero outfit that was made by the people that make DC and Marvel superhero outfits, complete with padding. It's the only time in my life I've had an ass, and I was so <laughs> happy. I was so thrilled that I kept making people slap that ass. <laughs> now, tell me about this project. I want to ask you about it. You've produced and hosted a documentary series uh, for real. It's the story of reality television. And this sounds very interesting to me because it's become such a cultural touchstone, reality TV. It's everywhere. And you're doing something really interesting, which is saying, let's really examine this and see how this developed and how this all unfolded. Because there's a whole generation now that thinks it's always been here. Right. But your documentary yes. is showing us, no, no, this started in a very specific way at a very specific time. For yeah. you, what did you realize when you're doing this documentary? What was the beginning of reality TV for you? For me, the beginning of reality TV was season one of The Real World. Yeah. Uh, that, I think, began the modern wave of reality TV. And uh, we. this is a seven part series that I did for E! And it's broken, each hour is broken out through different genres of, of reality TV. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I remember watching that Real World New York season one and just my eyes were just popping out of my head uh, right. because I just thought it was so brilliant and that it seemed like a, an infinite world of possibilities that, that they had just opened up. I think one of the things that people still don't realize, and this is my take, everyone knows that there's some manipulation going on. But on some of these shows, like say A Bachelor, there's an incredible amount of psychological manipulation that they do behind the scenes 
to make people react as strongly as possible. That was one of the headlines for me because uh, for us, it's usually the manipulation is really just in the casting. We cast highly emotional, yeah. funny people who are willing to share everything on the camera and let them go. Right. But um, with The Bachelor, I was really interested. I interviewed a couple, they Molly and Jason, who both, they, they traversed The Bachelor and Bachelorette worlds. And they really were so open about producers telling them, oh, she's gonna pick you, she's gonna propose to you. And then when she didn't propose to him, he was, obviously gave a huge reaction because he thought he was about to get proposed to. And um, it just, it, 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 and I, I don't know, it was just interesting for me seeing how that sauce was made yeah. over in Bachelor Nation. I don't know about you, but as a, I know you're, you're a real world fan, I remembered a big turning point was real world San Francisco, the bike, mes season. The bike season messenger three. Puck. Puck. And I remembered what he cracked was up until that point, most people were trying to be reasonable and occasionally someone's overtired or there's a fight or someone has a crush on someone. Puck decided, I'm gonna blow this thing up. I don't yes. care. And everybody, anytime Puck was on screen, people were like, what's he gonna do now? And I felt like after that, um, uh, everybody, every season was, people were going into it thinking, oh, I gotta be the Puck. I gotta be the Are guy. Puck walked so Amarosa could run. That's a book I'm working on. <laughs> it's a very, very long book, and I'm devoting all my. T that's why I'm. That's why you're ending the show. That's why I'm winding down the nightly version because I want to work wow. very hard on that book before wow. I go on to my next project. Some people are calling it a huge waste of time and a mistake. I think I'm making the right call. Wow, I do too. Yeah, I think it's compelling. Yeah. You're a terrible actor. <laughs> oh my God, I am the worst actor on the planet. I, I, I am the worst actor ever. And as a matter of fact, I've been, I was, I've been friendly with Sarah Jessica Parker for mm -hmm. many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew Michael Patrick King, the great, great Michael Patrick King, writer and director. Sure. And he was, you know, really the creative energy behind Sex in the City. And he, but way long before I was ever on television, I, um, he was like, I want you to come audition for a part on- oh. um, On Sex and the Sex City? And, the City. Yeah. and it was it was the role of this party planner. And I, I, they sent me the script and I was auditioning with my friend, John Hickey, who's an actor. And he was like, you are just so bad. It's just not <laughs> even possible. And then I did it for Sarah and she was like, what are you doing That's and you're fantastic. improvising yeah. and you have to do what's on the thing i'm like i wouldn't say this she's like it's not you i mean it's yeah. anyway so yes there's However, a reason I'm there's afraid... a reason we're not character i mean we're not actors i think i would i can't do anything where i can't find the camera so i think if you put me in a movie right. i'd enter and say i love you and i've always loved you <laughs> you know it's like cut what are you doing idiot I don't know. Now, that being said, I have played myself on a number of shows. Right. And that is a role that I feel like I, I can kind of play. I hope someday you're cast as yourself and they fire you and hire an actor. <laughs> I, would, I would truly not be surprised. I am, so, I am that bad. <laughs> well, you're doing something right. Uh, watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen airs Sunday through Thursday nights on Bravo. And I'm actually, I'm looking forward to the uh, documentary series uh, for real. I think that could be, I'm fascinated to see your take on how this all happened. Thank you. Colin. Yeah, yeah. And well, um, um, I look forward to crossing paths with you soon. I can't wait to travel and get back to New York. So uh, I hope you cruise me on the street. I will cruise you on the street. I've got diapers uh, in my pockets, but they're for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because I don't need to be dealing with anyone's poop but my son's. Right. I have enough to deal with here. Right. Hey, Andy, thank you very much. Really nice Thanks, talking to Jonah. you again. Take care. <laughs>